Dr. Jun is a world-renowned neuroscientist, but soul winning is his life's passion. Soon after his conversion, he founded Europe for Jesus Ministry and helped launch other youth ministries in Europe. Dr. Jun is married to Dr. Sabina, a family medicine physician, and they have three young children whom they homeschooled and disciplined for Jesus. Recently, he has accepted a call from Adventist World Radio and he has traveled to more than 40 countries sharing the good news. Our speaker has an innate passion for sharing the truth to young people, Dr. Chan Harry Kabunka. You probably wonder why are rehabilitations constantly thriving? Have you noticed that the same people that goes into the rehab enters a rehab only to come back out and go back into the rehab? There seems to be no end in the cycle of going into a rehab clinic or rehab center facility. Why is that? I'm going to be bold by proclaiming to you that the reason why is this. Science, medicine only tackles the mind and the body. But we know we consist of mind, body, and spirit. So if we're going to be successful in dealing with this, it needs to be holistic. And this is where government agencies, I'm not attacking it, lack the spiritual side because they have not tapped on on the most powerful tool God has given mankind we rely too much on man's way that is knowledge and science that's man's way but there is a divine power at work we do not acknowledge but during this presentation we're going to get full of it. We're going to go holistic. So here it is. This is the base. This is just the foundation of what I'm going to present to you. Notice what it says. This is Dr. John O. Sanders. The mind of the man is the battleground in which every moral and spiritual battle is fought. See it? It's not even a Seventh-day Adventist. And he understands that the mind is a battleground. Notice the next one. Dr. Vance Habner, another non-Seventh-day Adventist. Our defeat, our victory begins with what we think. And if we guard our thoughts, we shall not have much trouble anywhere else along the line. Again, another person who has discovered the avenue of the enemy is the mind. And that's why we must safeguard our minds. Why? Because your brains are like a sponge. You know what a sponge is? You use it to wash dishes. Right? You leave a sponge next to water, the water is gone. It's all in the sponge. Your brain is like a sponge. It absorbs all that is in the environment. Music, what you see, that's why we have that song. Oh, be careful little eyes, what you see. Oh, be careful little ears, what you hear. Oh, be careful little mouth, what you say. For the Father is looking down with love. Why do you think we have those songs? Because the brain is a sponge. It absorbs all. Notice. A healthy mind will help you find your way through life, from birth, through childhood, through teenage years, adulthood, into old age. Not my words. This is the, from the South Australian government. What does this tell you? There needs to be a healthy mind throughout the ages. Now, here's from Dr. Arvin from Behavioral Health and Wellness. A healthy mind can lead to a healthy body and much happier life. 
So I give you this basis and we will dive into this concept. What is addiction? Okay, let's define it first. Okay, notice what it says. Addiction is a treatable chronic medical diseases involving complex what? Complex interactions. All right, you're going to be my student for this morning. You're going to be a neuroscience student. So what does it say? Involving complex interactions between brain circuits, genetics, environments, and the individual's life experience. It's multifaceted. Okay? Brain circuits, genetics, the environment, and the individual's life experience. It's four-dimensional. So, notice what it says. People with addiction use substances or engage in behaviors that become compulsive and often continue despite harmful consequences. So, addiction is not just about substance. It also, the substance can be replaced with a behavior. Not just the substance, it can be replaced by a behavior. This is going to be important because we're going to tackle this head on. Either substance or behavior. Now, it has a despite harmful consequences. You will notice what I use here. So you think you, we're going, this presents to you what we're going to go dive into in this uh, plenary. We're going to talk about caffeine because whether you like it or not, caffeine is a class A drug. The only difference is it's legal. It's addictive. It's highly addictive. And we walk around macchiato with all our Starbucks cup because it's fashionable it's cool on the outside but you don't know what it's doing on the inside caffeine has done a lot of damage by hiding itself in many drinks bubble tea has caffeine why do you think all this tea bubble tea are booming in business why do you think because there is something behind it that is addictive to you but no one is telling you now there are other things we're going to go through all right i'm sorry notice okay look at this addiction icons okay if you notice this addiction icons i did not produce it young people I'm not genius enough to make it. But look at the addiction icons. You will see there. Amphetamine. Prescription drugs. Okay, this is acceptable for us. We know that. Hallucinogens, antidepressants, PCPs, cocaine, crack cocaine, alcohol. We kind of understand this. Weed. Now we go, we're going to something that will point out to some of our cherished idols. Gaming, mobile legend is addictive. Anim addiction, gambling, gambling online, smoking, coffee is there, I've addressed it slightly. Internet addiction. There are people who are just constantly on the internet. Adrenaline addiction, vaping addiction. You know, there is a tendency now for young people to shift from smoking into vaping because vaping is more passionable, more cool. But it's addictive. It's actually far more dangerous than smoking. If you're into vaping, forget vaping. Go back to smoking. Because vaping is highly 
more addictive. Nobody tells you. Of course. Anyway, so let's go to, these are the high cons. And the WHO, together with all health bodies, produced it. I didn't. I'm not genius enough to do it. So notice. So here it is. You see in this picture, mommy smokes, daddy drinks, and there's a kid in between that says, what about me? What does this tell you? It tells you the genetics and the environment component. There's a family history in it that can increase a person's predisposition to any type of addiction, regardless of the substance. And the problem is, the presence of one addiction increases the likelihood for addiction to another. So, if you are addicted to coffee, the likelihood you will be addicted to its cousins, like smoking, like all the other things that we have shown you, the likelihood increases. Why? Because there is a genetic there's a brain circuit, there's an environment, and a history, life experience component. We're going to go through that one by one. Notice, this is what happens in someone exposed to cocaine. Repeated use of cocaine increases a certain protein in the brain. This was found by some of the uh, researchers at ICANN School of Medicine in Mount Sinai, New York City. Here, Dr. Cates found out that when the brain, when, when a species is exposed to cocaine, there is a protein that is expressed in the brain. Elevated. It's a higher expression. And interestingly, this protein is not just for cocaine. It also increases with other substances. So we can say that this protein is involved in addiction. You are expressing it and therefore you're turning a certain genes on, the addicted genes. So, notice what we are told in 1891. This is writing by Ellen White in 1891, before addiction to substances were even declared or even told or even found out. Notice what she says. On every side, Satan seeks to entice the youth into path of perdition. If he can get their feet set in the way, he hires them down in their downward course, leading from one disposition to another until his victims lose their tenderness of conscience and have no more fear of God before, I, before their eyes. They exercise less and less restraint. They become addicted to the use of wine and alcohol tobacco and opium and go from one stage of debasement to another those were her words in a time when tobacco opium and alcohol were used as medicinal which means those substances which she wrote there were used as medicine by the modern science and then she already said, these substances will lead you from one debasement to another. I already told you, the genetic is turned on. And when one gene is turned on that you're addicted, your addiction to another increases. She already wrote it in 1891 that your predisposition, your vulnerability to addiction to other substances when you went down the road increases. This is a grade three educated woman. Think about it. 
How would a grade three educated woman know that? She went against all the scientific knowledge at her time. Why? Because she is inspired. Now, let's go to this more. Dive into it. So here it is, vulnerability to addiction. So this is what you see here in the screen. is a brain of a human and a brain of a mouse or a rodent. So you can find the color coding. The color coding shows you the same correspondent in human and in animals. This has been studied in animal first before being able to be studied in humans because ethically you cannot study humans without starting with animals. So what has been found is this. In addiction, there are brain circuits that are involved. Involved in producing the reward and the dependency on the reward. I will show you a practical application of this and show you ways in which why, how we even reward ourselves. Okay? So notice, before I go too deep into this, notice what Ellen White says. Again, in 1890s, speaking of soul and body destroying vice, the moral and intellect are overborne by the baser powers. The body is innervate, the, 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 the body is innervated, the brain is weakened, the fine nerves by being excited to a natural action become benumb and measure paralyzed. What she's saying is this. What happens in the brain is that your moral and your intellect is affected. Your judgment is affected. Okay? So not only that, he says here that the nerves of the brain are being excited by unnatural action. And we will go to that because again, she was writing in, in the 1800s. Science have not shown that. Notice what it says. It is impossible to fully arouse the moral sens sensibilities of those persons who are addicted to the habit of self-abuse to appreciate eternal things. It's impossible to arouse moral sensitivity. That's why Duterte, you know, Rodrigo Duterte, the former president, declared that people that are addicted to drugs, there is no hope for them because their brain is destroyed, right? Yes or no? Did he not declare that? That people who are, uh, are addicted to shabu, their brain is destroyed. Did he not say that? Yes or no? You tell me. I, am not, I have not been living in the Philippines, but I heard him make statement several times. Yes or no? Did he say that there is no hope for them? Yes. Okay. And that's why I wrote to him. Before we came to the Philippines, I wrote to President Duterte. And you think I'm crazy. I know. I know what you're thinking. Why would I be heard? Who am I? I'm nobody. But friends, if you don't do nothing, you achieve nothing. You do know that. If you don't do anything, you achieve nothing. So by writing to him, it can only get better. So I wrote to him, says, Dear President Duterte, I called him actually mayor because he likes to be addressed as mayor rather than the president. And so I wrote to him this lengthy letter and basically told him, look, I'm not an anti-vaxxer. I'm vaccinated for polio, all the other things, you name it, it's there. So I'm not going to enter into that controversy. But I believe you're doing everything wrong. However, I'm not just here to criticize, I'm here to give an alternative. And this is the alternative. I gave the biblical principles, I gave the Ministry of Health, pa uh, 
councils. I gave the New Start concept. And I told him also the spiritual concept. I received an, an email from him, from his office. At least he responded. Says, I have referred your letter to the health, to the health secretary, uh, Duque, at the time. And uh, I hope that he will get in touch with you. Never heard from him. My point is this. There are ways to rehabilitate an addicted, brain-destroyed patient back into some, to a child of God. But that person has to cooperate with the blueprint given in the Word of God. And we will go through that. He says, it is impossible to arouse the moral sensitivities of those persons who are addicted to the habit of self-abuse to appreciate eternal things. While in that state of addiction, there is no way they can appreciate eternal things. We will see why. That's what she said. Okay? And I will show you the science behind it. Okay, so before we, we go into that, look into this. This is the brain reward regions. You will notice this is the VTA, that's ventral tegmental area, has a highly dopaminergic innervation that goes towards the prefrontal cortex. That's the one here. It goes to the nucleus accumbens, amygdala, and other hippocampus. I will not confuse you with all this brain region. What I want to tell you is this. Dopamine is a reward transmitter. Pleasure transmitter. A reward, feeling good. So when the ventral tegmental area is stimulated, the reward system is activated. And therefore, the pleasure transmitter goes into your prefrontal cortex and you don't need anything else because you're high you're in pleasure land you're in la la land you're in cloud nine you're in your ha haven whatever you want to call it so notice this reward circuits mediates responses to natural rewards food sex social interactions etc okay this is very important because I'm going to tell you something. You may not like it, but I have to tell you anyway. Notice what happens in those who are addicted. Science has shown, remember Ellen White says, it's impossible for those people who are addicted to appreciate eternal things. Notice what science says, okay? Evidence of hypofrontality in addicted patients. So it means there is a deficit in how the prefrontal, work, prefrontal cortex works. So what is the task? What is the job of the prefrontal cortex? What is its executive function? It's right there. The functions of the prefrontal cortex is planning, attention, judgment, reflection, prioritizing, self-control, anticipation, organization, impulse control, second thoughts, modulating mood, response flexibility, goal-directed behavior, foresee consequences. So science says this is impaired in addicted patients so it cannot function and do all those tasks because it's impaired and that's why president duterte says he cannot trust an addicted person because of that he knows it why he is a man who reads he understands how the brain works. 
He is a man who reads scientific books, not just a war book. He is a strategist. He understands. And that's what science says, right? Notice what the spirit of prophecy says. When a person are addicted to the habits of self-abuse, this is all those vices. It's impossible to arouse their moral sensitivities, to appreciate eternal things, or to delight in spiritual exercises. Impure thoughts seize the control, the imagination, fascinate the mind, and the next follows an almost uncontrollable desire for the performance of impure actions. Thoughts leads to actions. Before you act, it begins with a thought. Okay? So now, science has shown how to look into this, to study it. So what science has done is they have put an electrode in the brain, uh, connecting it into the brain, and then the mouse or rat is food deprived. So the mouse or the rat is hungry. It's put in a box, and there are two levers. One presses, gets cocaine or alcohol, anything pleasurable or stimulates. The other one is food. So if you're hungry, normally a rat or a mouse would press food so he can get food to eat. But when they're exposed to cocaine, alcohol, substance abuse, they will ignore the food and just get what they need. So eventually, they will die. Why? Because they ignore what is their body needs. All they want is pleasure. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Because we Filipinos, we love food. Yes or no? We are food people. I'm telling you, we are food people. When you go and visit house, the first thing they ask you, have you eaten? Yes or no? Right? It's already, it's like two o'clock and you visit the house. The question, first question is, have you eaten? You go the same in the evening. Have you eaten? We are food country. Now, let me tell you something. Appetite is something we must learn to control. But sometimes we have no control. You know why? Because we are educated from a young age to have no control over appetite. Why? Because we have recess at school. So already, at a young age, you introduce recess. And recess is not to get, the point of recess is to get break from the classroom. Such that your mind will not be filled with the things to get some air, to run around, to be active, to generate brain cells. But what we do during recess is we go to the canteen and we eat and we eat and we eat what do you do you activate the pleasure part of your brain it's reward you're rewarding yourself so already at the young age your brain is used to getting rewards so naturally you will always crave for that reward So that's the reason why when your boyfriend breaks your heart, young ladies, the first thing you do is you go to the fridge. You check out your favorite ice cream. Check out your favorite food. Why? Because your heart is broken and you want to reward yourself and you reward yourself with food. That's what we do. 
something happens, the first thing we do, we just graduated. We got good grades. That should be enough to give us pleasure. We have accomplished something. But no, we don't stop there. We got to go to Shakey's. We got to go to Max. We got to go to all these places to additional reward. So what happens to us? Our brain becomes a pleasure-seeking brain. You understand me? We become pleasure-seeking. Why? Because already at a young age, that's what we've been doing. Remember, I told you, a healthy mind begins a childhood throughout ages. So, why am I telling you this? Because you young people know when you know that something is not right, you're going to do that which is right. And it has to stop somewhere. Otherwise, the cycle will continue. You will have children. If Jesus delays, you will have children and your children will be just the same. And the cycle continues, 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 continues. It has to be broken. And we need to educate our schools. We need to start educating our schools, our Adventist schools, our teachers. That recess is not for eating. Children should not be eating all day. That's a major deception of the enemy to enslave us to our appetite. And it begins with appetite. The next level, we cannot control ourselves with other things. Because appetite is the first level. A man or a woman that can control his appetite has a strong mind. So you want to create a strong-minded generation of young people? Start with appetite. Eat only three times a day, maximum. You have breakfast, you have lunch, you have supper. You want to have a strong mind, a strong will? Eat three times a day. And you will see. Begin with that. The problem is we eat five times minimum. You have breakfast, merienda, lunch, merienda, supper, and maybe ice cream at Lola's house at 10. What did we do? All day we've been rewarding ourselves become pleasure-seeking people and when you become pleasure-seeking you are vulnerable to addiction of some kind so this is what the rat the mouse did and the rat did it ignored the food and just keeps rewarding himself and that's why sometimes in some places you probably heard of it a person played game playing games for three straight days four days and then they died right you know why because they ignored the most important thing that they need sleep when you ignore what your body needs your body suffers so a teenage boy teenage girl has a heart attack why because he's been playing mobile legend all three days, four days straight. This is addiction. And we need to address it. We need to acknowledge it. Because a physician can only help you when you acknowledge your condition. So, is gaming addictive? Gaming is this disorder defined in the 11th revision of the International Classification of Diseases. Look what happens. This is WHO, not even mine. Impaired control over gaming. Increased priority given to gaming. 
Gaming takes precedence over other interests, daily activities, continuation of exhalation. What happens here is this. Nothing else matters to the person but gaming. Cannot study anymore properly because he wants to play. Doesn't want to talk to anyone else because he wants to play. He doesn't want to sleep because he wants to play. He doesn't want to sweep the house, do the, uh, the washing of the clothes because he wants to play. Gaming takes precedence. And you need to recognize that. That when that begins to happen in your life, you're most likely addicted. So, here's another one. Here's a scientific study showing that there's association between mobile game addiction and depression, social anxiety, and loneliness. Again, <laughs> this is science, not me. Specifically affecting male. Men, young boys, young men, we are mostly affected by this. Don't worry about the girls. They have their weakness. Online shopping. We will hit that next. Right? So if, if you think about this, this is a major problem. And I see it here in the Philippines. I see people on mobile legends and all this gaming on the middle of the day, on the job. And that's what? I've been told my husband is an adult already. Some a sister told me my husband is addicted to Mobile Legend, but he won't admit it to gaming. But he won't admit it. And guess what? He is depressed. He, he has social anxiety and he is lonely. All of which are scientifically based. Notice, what about pornography? The prevalence of this disorder is about 6%. Porn addiction refers to a person becoming emotionally dependent on pornography to the point that it interferes with their daily life and relationship and ability to function. Porn addiction is hypersexual disorder which also encompasses other problematic behaviors. Excessive masturbation, cyber sex, telephone sex, street club visitation. Pornography is addictive. And I know that here in the Philippines, many are affected by it. Why? Because it has become part of the society. It has become a norm. Men in a room, Guys would watch pornography together. It has become a norm in our society. But what you don't know, young men, is this. If you are watching pornography, you will transpire the way you look at women are going to be very different. The way you look at women will never be pure. The way you look at women will just be an object. Why? Because your brain absorbs what you saw and what you saw you will reenact in your mind and in your action so what you see you want to do and you enter into a relationship and then your image is this a woman is good for pornography And that's why we have many premarital sex among our young people. Because we watch pornography. And it's not just young men. Apparently, women are young women are being affected too. We have to talk about this, young people. We cannot sweep it underneath the carpet because it's happening in the church. And we must call sin by its right name. We're told in the spirit of prophecy, the greatest want of the world is a want of men. Men who cannot be bought or sold. Men who are in a soul are true and honest. Men who will call sin by its right name. Men who is true to duty as the needle is to the pole. Men who will do what is right 
and stand for the right though heavens fall we must call sin by its right name i love the sinner i love the young people but i hate the sin someone must help you young people and we as church ministers and leaders must address this and not be afraid to talk about it we must help you on that road to gain victory in Jesus you must see the evil behind pornography you need to see the evil behind it because if you don't see the evil behind it that will be our downfall pornography look what it says intemperance of any kinds benumb the perceptive organs and weakens the brain nerve cell and eternal things are not appreciated the higher the powers of the mind designed for elevated purpose are brought into the slavery to the baser passions and that's the reason why pornography is so powerful the devil knows exactly how to get our young people he knows he has more than 6,000 years of experience do not think that you can just take a look and it will not affect you the first image that you see will affect you and I can tell you how many people who have been addicted to pornography I can tell you if they could go back time they would wish they've never entered it because it has affected the relationship with women God wants to deliver us from this kind of addiction notice what happens in 2016 they found a correlation between self-reported pornography addiction and activation of the ventral striatum when shown erotic images so these are the people who are porn addicted okay they have seen images they have seen the act and guess what once they have been shown this image again their brain areas responsible for pleasure lights up it tells you that there are regions in the brain we can even say a pornographic brain because it lights up there's an activity so how many of us young men would like to go into that test and we say I'm not addicted to pornography and we enter into that test and we'll see our brain lights up the brain never lies whatever you saw whatever your experience is represented here I told you already it's like a sponge it absorbs everything and that is the reason why we are to stay away from any form of music that stimulates our passion stay away from diet that stimulates our passion that will lead us to that road all right how is addiction form I'm going to try and finish this quickly so notice what happens here you will see this graph it says use addictive pleasure experience why do you need to use an addic uh, addictive or pleasure experience because you have a negative experience you you're sad maybe your boyfriend or girlfriend broke up with you for whatever reason I don't know and then what do you do oh you hit the bar you hit the bottle or you take shabu whatever you take all these things and when you do that a new neural pathway is created in the brain then after that you experience it ah oh, this is not so bad this is quite good 
you will do it again. Then the path is strengthened right here from repeated use. Then your brain is in instinctive survival mode depending on what you just use. And then addiction is created. And then whenever you have a negative emotions to avoid the pain, to avoid the craving, you do it again and the cycle goes on. A new neural pathway is created in your brain. Okay, I'll give you an example. If you need, if you're going to the gym, right? And there are paths, there are cemented paths, but if you would take another path across, you created the path. The repeated use of this path creates a clear path. It's the same as in the brain. Now, notice as we go quickly, as we bring it to close, notice what Ellen White says. The fine nerves of the brain by being excited to a natural action become benumb and is a measure paralyzed. Now she says these words, okay? But when you look at the brain cells, <laughs> it's amazing. When you look at the brain connections, you will see how these nerve cells become paralyzed. And she says it in a time when there was no way for her to see that. You understand again? Now this is how addiction is. It says, go for it, go for it, go for it. You bypass thinking about it. Why? Because the brain that says, think about it, wait a minute, is not working properly anymore. See, you don't think about it, you just do it. And guess what? Brand just says, just do it. Tell me. Huh? Ah, Nike. Just do it. So what is Nike trying to tell you is this. Don't even think about it. Bypass that brain. You, you, all this branding are, sounds nice. Just do it. But it has a consequences on us. Whether we like it or not. The music in the world tells you, just follow your heart. Yes or no? Everything is about follow your heart. Follow your heart. Follow your feelings. But if, follow, if I follow my feelings, I'll be in trouble. You do know that. Why? Because the Bible says, the heart is deceitful above all things. Who can know it? There's a reason why the brain is up here. There's a reason why. The brain is up here to govern this. To govern this. To govern this. To govern this, this, and this. There's a reason why it is here. What the enemy would like, what so MTV would like, what Hollywood would like, what GMA Network, whatever they are, wants is this. This is down here. Because this rules, this rules, this rules. That's exactly the plan of the enemy. That's exactly how the, the enemy wants to weaken the church. Why? Because without this, you will just be a drone. You follow somebody else's rather than the conscience that God has given you. And it is here. You need to understand the strategy of the enemy. So, this is the problem we have. Now, what is the solution? 
He who created the mind and ordained his laws provided for its development in accordance with them. The brain is the citadel of the whole man. Wrong habits of eating, dressing, sleeping affects the brain. So, the heart of the youth are now like impressible wax, and you may lead them to admire the cream scratcher, Christian carrot, but if in a few years they become granite, what does this tell you? This tells you this at the childhood, they're moldable. When they get to adulthood, it's harder. That's the reason teaching a 50 year old man to ride a bike is impossible. You give a 50 year old man who has never ridden a bike a bicycle, and you give a five year old little boy a bicycle, and you tell them, Grandpa, little boy, go and ride a bike. I guarantee you, by the end of the day, the boy will learn to ride a bike. The grandpa, for weeks, cannot ride a bike. Why? That tells you the plasticity of the brain is moldable at the young age, and this closest becomes less plastic in adulthood. That's why the Bible says, train up a child in its way they should go, such that when they grow, they will not depart from it. These are basic principles found in the Word of God, confirmed by science. God is a scientist. This is something I have discovered. Uh, this, I received an award for this you see the slide in 2013 uh, in 2010 I began to read 2007 around that time I began to read the spirit of prophecy more I began to read the spirit of prophecy and understand what how the brain works and at the same time I'm already a neuroscientist and I started to study and put the spirit of prophecy into laboratory test. I wish I can show you. It's not there. The video source. But the point is this. The heart of the youth is like impressible wax. I read that quote. You read that quote. So I'm trying to see what is the difference between the brain of a child and the brain of a man. A grown or adult. And I was able to show the difference and it exactly fits with the description of Ellen White. I published this paper in Switzerland. Actually, it was a, an international publication. It's called Proceedings for International... Uh, it's PNAS, American Not Neuroscience Scientific Journals. And to cut the long story short, they gave me an award for that finding. And the finding was found, is based on the spirit of prophecy. You can tell the difference between young and old, juvenile and adult. That's the difference. So, how does this work for us? The parents must work begin with the child in its infancy. The lessons learned during the first seven years of life have to do more with forming characters than all that learns in the future years. That's why investment in young children is vital. Training them on their recess, not giving them food. Such that they learn to have a strong mind and not a strong stomach. The impressions made on the early life is seen in after early years. This is so true. So now, how do we create neural pathways in the brain? Notice, the truth of the Bible received will uplift the mind and soul. You want to know how drug addicts can be rehabilitated? In full rehab? It will not just be on the rehab of the world. It needs a rehab of the Word of God. Because the truth of the Bible received will uplift mind and soul. In the Word of God, the fine, fine subject of deepest thoughts, the loveliest aspiration. Notice what it says. No other book can satisfy the questioning of the mind or the craving of the heart more than the Word of God. 
When you study the Word of God, the mind expands. Why do you think the Jews, you know, there's a saying, the Jews run the world. You know how? The first six years of life, Jews don't do anything. I'm talking about the real Jews. I'm not talking about cultural Jews. The Jews don't do anything. The first six years of their child, their child play. But the age of six and a half to seven, they give them the three books of the Old Testament. And they start memorizing it. At the age of 12, they give them the five books. Memorize that. By the time they're 18, they have read the old Old Testament and memorized it. Fascinating. The scripture expands the minds. Environmental enrichment. Importance of neurogenesis. Okay, I'm going to give to you what it means. So here you find there is a way to create new brain cells. How many of you want to have new brain cells? I want new brain cells. How many of you want one? Because the moment you are born, millions of brain cells die. But what we are not told is you can have new ones. So how can you have new ones? Selected dietary intake. Rich in selenium. Selenium diet. Physical exercise. Run 35 to 40 minutes a day. Jog. You will generate new brain cells. Contextual learning. How do you have contextual learning? Read the Bible. Because you will understand context. Context. This is published. It's a scientific paper, not mine. Okay, there are other things I will not go through. But what it does, it stimulates BDNF. It's called brain-derived neurotropic factor. And this allows for the creation of new cells, proliferating cells. Now the problem is this, you have a new cell. But how do we then determine how this cell function? Science has shown that newborn cells are recruited by the older cells in its function. So, if you want to teach new cells the right thing, then you have to do the right thing. You have to eat right. You have to exercise. You have to read the Bible. And so when I am running, because new cells are being born, guess what I'm doing? I'm listening to audio Bible. I'm listening to the Word of God. So that the new cells that are being born are being exposed to things of lofty heights of the things of God and therefore helps my brain to be fortified in the Word of God. That's the secret. It's not just, you know, the problem is this. We exercise. We do all these things. We do Zumba. But what we're doing is we're listening to music that will excite our body. That will excite our lower passions. And it will not do much for us because our brain cells are being born to be excited to the things of the world rather than the things of God. City upbringing. Urban upbringing affects mental health. Did you know that living in the city and urban areas affects mental health? Why do you think Ellen White and the Spirit of Prophecy says, go country living? Live in the country, work the city. Okay, there are data on this. I'm going to go quickly through this. Again, mental disorders, religion, and spirituality, a systemic evidence-based review. Notice, this is on the paper. There is good evidence that religious involvement is correlated with better mental health. In the areas of depression, 
substance abuse, suicide, and some evidence in stress-related disorders and dementia. So being an active church member involved in church activities helps mental health. This is what the paper is saying. And that is the reason why Seventh-day Adventists have a good mental health. Okay, this is another one for you. Supreme love for God and selfish love for one another is the best gift that our Heavenly Father can bestow. This love is not an impulse, but a divine principle. So, I'm going to speak to you about love. How does God's love do it? Okay, remember I said to you, He who created the mind or the day law provided for its development. There is a neuropeptide God had placed in our brain called oxytocin. And this is what we call the love hormones. Okay? So notice, it's a peptide hormone. It, for those who are chemists, this is what it looks like. Interestingly, this is from a colleague of mine from the University of Zurich. We went to, to, the, to the neuroscience school together, and I asked him to give me some slides of people that have uh, over trusting that trust even the worst of all and looked into the brain and guess what he found he found an over expression of oxytocin in the brain so oxytocin helps with emotional and social behavior cognition psychiatric condition oxytocin plays a, a, a role in mental health but a natural stimulation of oxytocin how do we do that again exercise make social efforts social distancing works against your oxytocin and that's why during the time of the pandemic many people were suffering from depression and loneliness it is God's plan for us to have contact with one another to fellowship we need consistency it increases the power of the mind and efficacy by each use now I said to you already in the beginning before we close every action begins with a thought so here it is thoughts lead to actions actions repeated become our habits our habit determines our lifestyle our love style becomes our destiny and our character so if you want changes here where do you go you have to start from the beginning the thoughts flood your brain your thoughts with the things of God why? Because the godly things leads to godly actions. Godly actions leads to godly habits. Godly habits leads to godly lifestyle. Lifestyle leads to godly character and our destiny. If we want, and if there's something wrong in our lives somewhere, we must go to the beginning in the thoughts. God's word. God's music begin there and the rest God will take care of even if the character habits and practices of parents have been cast in anterior mold if the lesson given them in child and youth have led to unhappy development of character they need not despair amen the converting power of God can transform inherited and cultivated tendencies for the religion of Jesus is uplifting. Born again means transformation, a new birth in Christ Jesus. Friends, in my career as a neuroscientist, I have been blessed. Not because I'm genius, no. 
simply because I prayerfully adhered to the counsel in the spirit of prophecy and in the word of God. And yielding to those have been a great blessing to me. And I believe that it will be a blessing to you when you yield to these counsels. I don't know about you, but I want to close with a special appeal this morning. How many of you are struggling with something? I don't need to know it. Nobody else needs to know it. It could be caffeine, bubble tea. I have no idea. It could be internet, online. It could be Facebook. It could be TikToking. You struggled with that and you recognize it's unhealthy. It could be pornography. It could be gaming. I don't know. It could be just food. I don't know. But you know. And this morning you want to say, Lord, I need victory. Help me adhere to your word and your counsels that I may find victory in Jesus. If there is anyone here, I'm going to kneel here in the front. You can come and we will pray. Very simple appeal. You're struggling with something, food, alcohol, caffeine, gaming, pornography. I don't know, but you know it. I don't need to know. But you want to come because you want to give it to Jesus. Your only safety is found in the arms of God. And this is where it begins my young friends the secret to success is found on our knees before our almighty God mighty God and everlasting father again we did not have the much time that I needed to cover all carefully I wanted to share more experiences with them practical ones but because of time uh, we're not able to cover it but father you know your young people you know their struggles and they come before you with their struggles they are here admitting their own condition and father I ask that in the name of Jesus you will honor their commitment and their admission this morning it takes courage to come and say, this is my vice. This is my sin. And I want to place it at the feet of Jesus. Father, here are your children. Here we are. Be merciful unto us for we are sinners. And we ask not only for cleansing, but we ask for the victory. Total and complete victory found in Jesus. May every person that rises from their knees from this place receive the power that they seek from heaven to walk with you now and forevermore ever closer to Jesus. Encamp your angels around them. Cut off the enemies claim over them that the enemy will find no foothold and from here on they can be free in Jesus thank you for what you're about to do in their lives as they offer themselves a living sacrifice unto thee to serve you love you honor you 
all the days of their lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.